As a heads up before this episode, Magic John features some really severe flashing effects, way beyond what you normally see in a Famicom game. I cut around most of them, but I did need to demonstrate the abilities that make the screen flash the worst. If you need to drop out now, here's a quick summary. It's a weird game, but I liked it. Okay, on with the show. It's nice when I'm this deep into Fami Daily, and I can still be surprised. Magic John is a game that I got, played one level, and then put in the collection until it was time to make this video. And then I sat down and played it, and I think this is Jalico's best Famicom game to date. The plot of the game is that John is your everyday, all-American kid. Yeah, he's explicitly called out as American. He became apprenticed to the magician Mr. Pone. And then his girlfriend, Yu, got kidnapped. That's Y-U, not Y-O-U. The monsters also kidnapped her father, because this game has a weirdly complex story. Now John has to go through five acts to get her back. Each act actually consists of multiple stages plus a boss fight, so there's really 12 stages here. As you might expect, A jumps and B attacks. John has a little burst of energy that he can emit, but if you hold down the B button, it charges up, and that shot can go through enemies. John has a life bar that allows him to take up to six hits. Most attacks only take off one point from this bar, but there are a handful that will take two, usually colliding with an especially nasty monster. The enemies don't drop anything here. There's no recovery items or power-ups. You do fully recover when you complete a stage, though. You do get one thing for killing enemies, and that's extra lives. There's a counter keeping track of how many enemies you defeat, and at 50, 100, and every 100 after that, you get an extra life. And as a bonus, the mini-bosses and the bosses are worth extra kills. John's real power is the first half of this title, the magic. Hitting start brings up a menu where you can select between 12 spells, 4 kinda generic ones, 4 that do a screen-clearing attack, and four that transform you into something else. You cast the spells by pressing up and hitting B, and almost all of them will deplete your magic meter a bit. The ones that do the big attacks are almost entirely useless. I'm not going to really show these off because they flash the screen pretty badly, but they do hardly any damage to the mid-bosses. There are multiple forms of the spells. After you complete Acts 1 and 3, the effects change a bit. These have different elements associated with them, fire, water, air, earth, but I didn't see any difference in effect. The utility spells are a lot more useful. There's two different healing spells, one that recovers all of your health and one that recovers three bars. It's actually slightly more efficient to use the three bar recovery because the maximum amount that the full recovery can give you is five health points. You can also choose to stop time and this will help you with some tougher enemies or make yourself totally invulnerable and just run through things. The invincibility time seems to be very short, though. It's the transformation spells that you're going to really rely on. There are three that turn you into a special creature, and one that turns you back to John. The one that turns you back to John you can cast for free, and it's the only spell that the other forms can cast. The Tiger Man can jump much higher, is invulnerable while jumping, and has a very powerful attack. But the attack range is extremely short, and you can't attack while jumping. So that makes the tiger form of pretty limited usefulness. You'll be dealing with a lot of aerial attacks in this game, and for the nastier enemies, the tiger can't take them out in one hit, so you'll take damage anyways. It was extremely potent on this mini-boss, though. It has an attack that can't be avoided unless you use invulnerability. The Birdman is by far the most useful of the forms. You can fly by hitting A repeatedly, and he has an attack that works about as well as John's regular attack. Maybe a little bit slower. The Birdman is pretty much required to beat the game, as there are two bosses, including the final boss, whose vulnerable point is way out of reach. They will eventually lower it down, but not often. The Fishman is similar to the Birdman in that you can swim around by tapping A repeatedly while you're in the water. Unfortunately, there is exactly two places in the game where you can swim. 
working in their favor is that the boss of that stage practically requires using the fish form. It's really the only reasonable way that you can reach their vulnerable spot. One of the challenges of Magic John is that you can't refill your magic during a stage, so you have to be kind of cautious about how you're using your magic. And that does lead to a situation where you're probably going to be too hesitant to use anything other than the healing. John's regular form and normal attacks are more than enough to get through about 75% of the game. There's just a handful of places where you'll want to break out some additional magic. I thought that the stages in Magic John were really good. The first act is pretty simple, but after that, things start ramping up. There aren't any pits that you can fall into, but you do have to worry about spikes on occasion, and enemies all have fixed spawn points, and they seem to be carefully placed to make the game a challenge, but not too difficult. I managed to beat the game in an hour and four minutes, and the hardest part wasn't the final boss, it was the mini-boss before the final boss. If you get a game over, then you'll go back to the start of the act, and the stages are long enough that that could be setting you back 10 minutes or so. One thing I have to point out in the game is the parallax scrolling. The Famicom hardware really didn't allow for this kind of thing, so it's really impressive here. In fact, the visual style throughout Magic John is really good. I love the boss designs, they're all kind of creepy and slimy, and the stages look pretty great too. In fact, the only thing that doesn't look good is the man who taught you magic, Mr. Pong. He seems to be the only thing that Japanese players remember about the game. It's not popular in Japan, but I found quite a few people saying that they tried it out without knowing what the game was, and discovering a hidden gem. And I myself had a lot of fun with Magic John. Yeah, I beat it, and I don't normally do that with Famicom games I'm playing for Fami Daily, but it was fun to play. I had a good time with it, and I'd probably play it again and try out using the magic in different ways. This one's a good one.